we are back with another episode of Better Pet Parenting. And um, this week we're going to speak to Namrata from Positive Tales. Um, I'm sure a lot of you already follow her. She's um, the mom of Ginger, who is a very well-behaved golden retriever dog. I think I have ever ever met, <laughs> uh, and will probably ever meet. Um, and we're going to talk to Namrata today about how you can actually train your dog to go off leash. um of course it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort um especially if you're living in a city where going outside for walks essentially means a lot of distractions hi namrata hi <laughs> what's up oh, i heard something about well behaved uh, golden retriever <laughs> yeah i was telling everybody about how ginger is setting the benchmark i think a little too high <laughs> for everybody <laughs> Uh, we will talk about it i i have tons of examples of where uh, lots of naughtiness on the part of ginger so it's about management <laughs> managing the bad she is very naughty <laughs> no i'm very yeah naughty. i'm sure ha par bhai wo i think the, the only time i have met ginger has been that time that we met at pluto guy and yeah. uh, it was uh-huh. amazing because i've taken siracha to that same pluto guy <laughs> and every single time there has been at least some incident before she has calmed down so i always okay. think back to how it, that's become like a regular phrase that i talk to siracha with what would ginger do <laughs> will you please learn okay. something <laughs> virtually <laughs> i yeah we we'll talk about it we we'll talk about it for sure and i'll tell you all the times i've had to fish her out of a nala or have to like some <laughs> like she's rolled on something horrible and i had to bathe her two three times Oh so good. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to laugh. Awesome. So, Namita, to start off, um, I- I'm sure a lot of people are curious, and I'm curious as well. When did you start, um, you know, learning about dogs, and when did you kind of start doing this um, hmm. canine behavior um, side life that you are also le- leading, right? Canine trainer by the evening, and yes, yes, by the day. <laughs> Yes, I do. I do have a day job in the development sector. Um, yeah. I started uh, getting so I've always been involved with you know dogs and cats outside, but I took it um, very seriously as a profession when I did get ginger about seven years ago. Hmm. Um, and actually, at the time, I I did not want a dog trainer, and it was because I thought it was very rough, and it was like I wanted the dog to like play with me. I didn't want some like perfect dog. Uh, mm-hmm. but the training we had was super fun it was all about building a relationship with the dog it was all about understanding the dog all about laughing at the very doggy things your dog does instead of like wanting some picture perfect uh, yeah um like dog and um, so i that's how i like, got into it and i mean i'm here now <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so yeah. now i start Awesome, and uh, I know that you travel a lot with Ginger as well, right? And you take a lot of like I, I've seen a lot of hikes happening. I've seen a lot of like cross country yes. travel happen. How does that? Uh, I mean, how did that start? Did it take a lot of time to kind of train your dog to kind of do this, or how does it so, start? Yeah, so I mean, I didn't. That's that wasn't my intention. I did not know that's what would happen in in life. But I think um, we just. you know made sure she knew like her basics as a puppy and she was expo i think we did a very good job socializing her taking her in autos take her to the beach taking her to people's homes walking her like you know three four times a day meeting people um and then that that socialization when she was like three four five six months old really helped us later when i had to move to delhi and i was like well come along or like when i had to leave her and travel or when i was had to like pandemic and i was like i'm just going to take you along or when i had to travel back to bombay for work or again pandemic so to come to bangalore to my parents house was like just come along um definitely yeah. um it's not something that i had trained for specifically but uh, it just comes down to like she trusts me and i know that i know when she's going to get really scared Uh, mostly at nothing but when you know she's going to be really stressed mm-hmm. so like the first train i ever took with her she held her bladder for 16 hours oh wow and okay. it was like actually super stressful for me but she ate her food she seemed okay 
and then we've done now several train rides and most mm. recently you know the longest one was 33 hours mm. but every time we jumped out of the train like she did pee and she did poop and we came back in then i was very smooth but it, it's not it's like 3 4 hours later you know so it's yeah. not uh, i think sometimes social media also distorts like uh, you know maybe we don't do a good job about posting the challenges um yeah. certainly like there was a time when i could we we'll come to like the off leash bit later but it's like yeah. a it's you have to find this there's, there's never a perfect dog that remains you know there's always ups and downs and you just have to work with it yeah um yeah. also i think in, the definition of a perfect dog is well right what you kind of alluded to that there is no perfect dog who will always do the right thing and will always because that line so, of what is right and wrong is in your head that this is how yeah is this is your dog good for you are you good for the dog that's the only question that mm-hmm. that's important do you yeah. like your dog does your dog like you like yeah. that's basic and why if that is a yes to both then whatever situation comes later like you will figure it out because that relationship is there it's sorted mm-hmm. and then of course it's helped by a lot of things like socialization training you know walking your dog or playing with all of that helps but um the basic question is do you like your dog and does your li- dog like you do you trust each other do you you know get along yeah so that's it <laughs> that that is basic <laughs> <the> thing is <laughs> yeah i think that makes uh, i mean a lot of sense as well right uh, i i mean i feel I, like yeah. so i'm just saying like 10 15 years ago we had no trainers but dogs had a fantastic life people had no problems even yeah. and now there are more trainers and more like labels and more problems I mean, not to question, but at yeah, the end of I mean, it, it is the relationship that you yeah, have with your dog. I just feel like uh, every time we complain about our dogs, we should just think about what would happen if your dog would understand it, and how guilty you would feel. <laughs> Why bitching about your dog? Why are you doing yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, awesome. So uh, there are a lot of questions coming in, but I want to jump right into the topic um, that we wanted to talk about, right? Um, which is. Uh, I mean I'm sure you've obviously worked with Ginger so much to kind of do this uh, where she now responds perfectly to you off leash but how does somebody get started and how sure. do you kind sure. of reach that stage yeah. so uh, first thing um, that I would like to say um, like big like you need to like remember this with greater freedom comes even greater responsibility so if your dog is off leash you be damn sure that the dog won't trouble any human other dog like won't dig up a plant or won't get obviously get into a fight and you be super super aware that whatever happens is your responsibility it's not the dog's responsibility so like with great freedom comes greater power and greater responsibility that's what you have to like you know really really remember before you like unleash your dog and let them go um so like the first thing i think that you need um that anyone should be aware of like before you unleash your dog is you should really know what is your dog like what do they like what do they not like um and be able to predict you know when they'll do something naughty or when they'll disrupt something when they are less likely to listen to you so you you said that ginger you know like perfect obedience off leash but that's not true I know when she's going to be like disobedient, and I never off leash her there. And when I know she's she's going to listen, uh, that's when I unleash her. So like that, the the key is you know because definitely there'll be times when um, something startling happens, or like so in in, in the case of Ginger, like uh, she has a very horrible uh, scavenging habit. It was there it started like three four years ago, um, and then. It took me like seven, eight months to figure out. It was started out of the blue. I could never leave her off leash because she would like scab, yeah. scab, scab. We figured out it's like some medical issue, but that okay. habit still remains because dogs are natural scavengers. Hmm. So now I'm like hyper aware of where and when I am like clipping her off leash because I, for instance, I also know when the you know I try to when like park walkers you know come and leave the party. So I never try to walk after them, or if I do, I never unclip her. So then, if I, because that's it's harder for me to control her when I know her like nose is going to go straight for that roti, and it's chapati, okay? She will leave bones, <laughs> all of that, but it's chapati or bread. 
Uh, so like that, that I know, and I, I can make out you know, when she's like sniffing, and her like nose has caught that chapati, or just sniffing to be like, oh, enjoying the walk. Hmm. So the first point was it's a huge responsibility. My second point is you must absolutely know your dog. Like you should know when they're going to react, what hmm. their weaknesses are, what their strengths are, uh, because like I said, there's no like perfect dog, but hmm. it's only perfect. so it totally works for me of course i can like train her train her train her and like make sure she never like picks up chapati i can but i can also do things like preventing it and just clip her or you know you can use a muzzle like all of those there's so many yeah. ways where she can have her freedom and she can also be on leash and still enjoy both of us can enjoy hmm. um yeah so that was like two like big things jinda not like super well behaved but she's <laughs> she's just very manageable because i like know when and when she's when and where she's likely to miss it so just prevent it um mm, so the first okay. thing like if you really want to go on off leash romps in in like um in your park or like outside the city or whatever the first thing to remember is if you have a puppy like socialize the hell out of it so take them to places if you can't walk them yet pick them up and go the reason you're not supposed to walk them if they're too young is is really dirty and they prone to infection so carry them in bowl let them see smell let them hear things you can like walk to the market walk to the park walk to people's homes go to your terrace like go run errands just take them for paths take them for auto rides that's what we did with ginger a lot right in drive yeah at that time. um and what's going to happen uh, is and once you can start like walking your puppy Perhaps it's not like mostly recommended, but walk them, walk them, let them get a little tired, and just unclip them, and then you see what they do. Right? Have like a baseline. If you're going to be scared hmm. forever, at the age of two or three, or you can't suddenly keep them off leash because they also don't know what to do with that freedom. Just unclip hmm. the puppy, and, and every time you think they're going to like walk ahead of you, just turn around and walk back. So you're teaching them, come on, just keep following me. Don't hmm. roam around. So from day one of being off leash, your puppy learns to follow you. The second okay. thing is, hmm. puppy gets confident. They will try to roam. They will maybe jump on people. So again, you have to be super aware. Maybe you can um, leave the leash dragging, so you can you know, step on the leash in case they are roaming away. You can start including toys, treats, you know, sticks. Pick up things that make you more exciting. Around hmm. seven eight months is when dogs become deaf. They turn into teenagers. They become deaf, you know. All your training is like thrown out of the window. You're very frustrated. Yeah. They're like super energetic. So you know, then all these additional tools you can use. Um, but from day one, like tell them like what you expect. Don't you know? Don't feel sorry for them. Don't shelter them. Don't make excuses for their bad behavior. A puppy mm. of three and a dog of three years can never jump on a person. They have to always yeah. follow you. So start from day one. Um, and don't be scared. You know, and the advantage of unleashing your puppy is that no one is going to be scared. If you unleash a like adult dog, the likelihood of someone being scared is very high. And then you are also going to be on edge. But your yeah. puppy is so teach them from day one. Just follow me. I know. Yeah. Follow me. You can eat. You can throw a toy. You can pick up a stick. Whatever. Whatever you're comfortable with. But make you exciting. And every time the puppy walks ahead, you just turn around. The puppy is like, oh, oh okay, I have to follow you. And it's fun to follow you. Right? Don't yeah. make it boring. Be yeah. fun. Like your puppy's like best friend. And that's um, counterintuitive as well, right? Because usually, I mean, I've faced it like this one time when Saracha was off leash, and I got scared because she was going ahead, and I ran after her, which only made yeah. her run even further. Yeah. And only when yeah. I stopped and turned around, I realized that now she's looking for me. So, yeah. Yeah. It's counterintuitive, but it basically works. That start moving away. Work. Just walk, walk away. Mostly, your dog won't run away from you. Hmm. Um, or if they do, it's for like it's not like they don't run away and disappear. They like yeah, chase us quickly. Yeah. Not that it's okay, but like don't like stress out. Like you have to remain calm and in control, and that comes with practice. You can't just switch hmm. it on. Yeah. Even for me, it took me a long time. Um, and the mistake I actually made with Ginger was, you know, we did not leave her off leash a lot. In, okay. Because we lived in Bombay, you can't because if you go out of the building, you're on the main road. obviously mm. you can't get to me or dog off leash on the main road mm. uh, very few dogs you know you can trust in that situation so it was only on the beach which we went to say once a week um yeah. so i didn't really practice it until until we came to delhi and honestly okay. if you are from delhi uh 
the responsibility is even greater i'm looking at bangalore i'm looking at bombay all the parks are not uh, for dogs you cannot even walk your dog on leash there and if you look at why it's because people have abused the freedom you know they've let either they're not picked up after their dog the poo or yes. there's just been an incident where a dog has say you know someone has complained they're uncomfortable hmm. and you have to remember it's always the humans first like that so that's why i keep saying with more freedom comes like even greater responsibility you can't yeah. even if a dog is so friendly they cannot approach anyone forget jumping because it mm. just takes one incident and the whole park the whole area is just you know cordoned off for dogs yeah um and delhi is really lucky all the dda parks are uh, open dog to friendly. dogs yeah yeah you know if you go at a quieter time you can even off keep the dogs off leash yeah um, and um, it's just if you are not responsible now it's like it's a ticking time bomb like you just take one incident and you know deal will be like okay now no dogs off leash um, which is why it's very important to like socialize teach your dog to follow you and now if you have an adult dog and you want to start you know figuring out ways to unclip them um your dog has to listen to you all dogs there's no other way you have to your yeah. dog has to listen to you all dogs um obviously the biggest command is a come when called is the recall hmm. command um you start off indoors you go to your lobby you practice you know in your lane then you practice where you want to keep your dog off leash when you practice on like a 20 30 foot leash and then you finally unleash the dog you don't just go and unleash it. for a puppy yeah hmm. maybe you can go dog and see what they do but for an adult dog i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend that just because they can do anything from uh chasing a squirrel to just turning deaf to you um to kind of more benign things like you know stepping in the puddle or digging a hole but it could get really dangerous really quickly um yeah. so the re- command has to be perfect like absolutely perfect um in the case of ginger i actually uh, it goes in terms like honestly it's it's you know it's like 98% good but 2% something like really fast like you just will not listen to me <laughs> in a couple situation but yeah. i know what this situation was so i just click on i just click on like i don't even risk it mm. because it's uh, at my my personal preference is to do a mix of off leash on leash so you okay. walk for some time and then you unleash the dog then you call her back and you walk again on leash um, and she's a big dog right i don't want to even if she's not some some people are scared just by the mere presence of a dog so you have mm. to do respect obviously Yeah, you have to respect that. Yeah. So I, I, you know, if you have a puppy, I recommend like start from day one, like socialize your puppy. Um, I'm not about playing with other dogs. It's about you know remaining calm and focusing on you in a range of environments. Right. I um, mean, if you have a small dog, like work on the obedience. Like likely there is a good relationship between you and the dog already, but just like mm. strengthen indoors as well as outdoors. Got it. Um, that's okay. What I would say. how how long does it typically take for a recall command to work in an outdoor situation what i why i'm asking is um, a lot of people you know say that when we're indoors my dog responds perfectly but outdoors because there's distraction or whatever he doesn't listen not even to treats yeah. or whatever else how long yeah, yeah, does yeah. it typically take and how should you start i would say stick to uh, a minimum of 3 weeks is what it would take if you practice every day um, so even like if if you just break it down to like okay i'm going to try 20 times a day which is just 10 minutes like come when call 20 times 20 mm-hmm. times in 21 days is i don't know how many 400 oh, times yeah. you are sick so yeah. imagine the power of 400 right try like definitely like there's going to be a big improvement yeah. but now when you say outdoors it could mean anything um it could mean in a colony park that your dog is used to it could mean in a new park where your dog has never been and uh, then you don't know what what could happen when the where the stray dogs live or what time what is around you may not know yeah. uh, it could be it could be like uh, it could be uh, uh, on a walk on a long leash if you're calling a dog on that road itself like you don't know so outdoor means many things uh, it could be in a crowded space you know So outdoor is one thing. Outdoor is at least four to five, at least four to five different areas. So the work never stops, basically. But at least three oh, weeks. Never stops. 
yeah but 3 weeks of practice outdoors so that definitely. you are fairly confident that your dog will listen to you in that area definitely and you have to generalize it like, you know the more you practice the better you will get and i'm not yeah. saying you have to like go armed with your treats you know every time because one like you said don't work obviously yeah. the squirrel the dog is going to be more exciting than the treat like come on yeah. it actually goes to say like the treat is more exciting than you indoors so work on that doing obedience work with house treats in the house as well because mm. at the end of the day, food is really good but you have to wean off food otherwise you have you know you go with like a biscuit to cheese to chicken if not chicken like something else something else to keep building there's no end to it yeah so the dog really has to and uh, many uh, ways to do it but you have to be more exciting than anything around essentially correct yeah and the more honestly the more you play with the dog yeah the better they will be to come back to you focus on you and i've seen this with ginger as well yeah. um that the day i the day that i play with her more and then i take her for a walk and unleash her she's just quicker her recall is just quicker like her focus on me is just quicker mm. um on if like i've had like a you know i'm not pay attention to her for a few days and i and quicker she's going to do her own thing she's going to be slow um and it's oh, and i know okay. in case it's not like um, she's just being naughty she's like mm, what do what is it in me do i like sniff there or come to you but it's still frustrating like you have to come no matter what right so mm. it's just practice or if i'm like even once or twice a day in the house if i like remind her come means come to me, that's it so it's more a, it turns out to be more of a conversation it's not like mm. you don't know, have to be like stressed about it. it's like come you come like you get something you get a scratch you get a treat you get a toy you get a smile like the ultimately the dog needs to work for you not like hmm. yeah correct and it uh, huh. yeah. yeah and it it may seem like this big abstract concept but it's really easy like this is what has been happening for centuries and centuries like yeah. no one used to train their like guard dog to guard the estate you know in the 1800 like, the dog just knew and like people treated dogs as dogs you know so yeah i think you just remember like this finds something that motivates your dog and like you know build that relationship yeah, yeah. Uh, and and uh, yeah the important thing that i am also taking away is the um, to kind of create that orientation also right before you are setting out for that work that your dog should already be in that uh, mood of i have to kind of respond to them so um does yeah. that also work right like make, making them do maybe a few commands before you step out for a walk yes. so that they're in yes. that mindset yeah they are ready to uh, play with you hang out with you yeah yeah awesome definitely and certainly you know if your dog is a little fearful and doesn't enjoy the walks or if the dog tends to react at certain things and you can't manage them even on leash don't do off leash yeah. like first of all walk your dog when there are a few people around like manage like think like be an advocate for your dog and think mm-hmm. about where they are comfortable some Got dogs off leash like it like sometimes the leash is like their safety net so don't hmm. put them off don't put them in a position of being right. uncomfortable hmm so this is about what your dog also wants. got it and tell me something now okay so if if somebody is kind of trying this out right uh, they've practiced and what do you do if there is a situation when um there is some kind of distraction your dog is off leash um and you are suddenly in that position where your dog is maybe not listening to you at all how do you then manage that situation like disaster so in, management <laughs> disaster management yeah so uh, one like um, you should kind of know a little bit about how your dog will react to those triggers if it's like another dog they've just gone to play with or if it's like a pack of stray dogs and like your dog is scared or they've gone up to some group of people and like you know are bothering them so see assess if you can like catch the dog and clip her yeah uh which sometimes is you know if the dog is just dis- like with a group of say dogs or people it's easy to catch her she's yeah. running around scared or chasing a squirrel you just have to wait wait mm. or like what is what you're not going to be able to chase the dog yeah what you can do again depending on the dog is to walk away and yeah. hide yeah. yeah um sometimes that works but it really comes down to you really knowing what first of all being able to predict in what situation will your dog listen and not listen 
Be really familiar with where you are. I would not yeah. recommend you go to clean your face and unclip your dog. That takes a lot of confidence, a lot of practice, a lot of experience also, like uh, with your dog, I mean, not just with dog. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And like, hope for the best. It's like a pack of stray dogs, and your dog is like going to fight, or is like you know you have to um, you have to intervene, and also yeah. be careful about not injuring yourself. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, basically, not panic yourself and don't add not to the situation. Great freedom comes even greater responsibility. <laughs> I feel like that's the most difficult part about this as well, right? Just um, yeah, trusting that your dog will kind of be okay, and you have to be the sane person and not like let your own fear transfer yeah. onto the dog as well. Yeah. Definitely, and you have to prepare. Like, like I said, don't just go and off. Keep the dog off leash. You like train the dog, you know, from inside your yeah. home to outdoor. Really see, does your dog even listen? Look at you when on a walk, or is it like totally focused on everything else? Hmm. Um, know what will motivate your dog, indoor, yeah. outdoor. Um, certainly for a like even ginger, like for a biscuit, she'll do anything indoors. But outdoors, I need to use sticks or leaves. I need to like run. I need to play hide and seek. Like I have yeah. to be as engaging as that squirrel or that. Stinky smell, or say another. Dog. Yeah, that makes sense. There's one. But their dog, which is yeah, sorry, there you go. So there's one question that we got asked: that What do you do if an off-leash dog comes running up to you and your dog is not friendly? This is on the other side. Yeah, uh, that is a problem. Which is why when you unclip your dog, you better make sure you can call the dog off other dogs. And make sure your dog is not what they say is dog friendly, like yeah. uh, too dog friendly. Like use your dog. A lot of people make the mistake of letting their dogs play with other dogs, as in the puppy stage, and yeah. that just teaches the dog, oh, I should play with other dogs and forget my human. And yeah. that's a big mistake because what I am telling you and what you should uh, teach your dog is, I am the best. I am the most exciting. I am the most fun. I am your best friend. From day mm. one, um, so that they avoid a situation like this. But if you do have a dog coming up to you, and you know your dog is scared, or you don't want that dog to come up to you, yeah, um, call up the owner. Or sometimes it's best to like let go of your dog, like let them run and hide, and you try to control this dog. Um, mm. I do work with a stick, not to hit the dog, just to ward. Sometimes the stray dogs listen. Pet dogs will not mm. <laughs> listen to that. Uh, but it's very tricky. It's happened to me a couple times. I've I've actually yeah. just been bitten by an off-leash dog. Uh, I had okay. to call out for help, and you know, it took like a minute at least to get that dog uh, off. Uh, break the dog bite. Yeah, it's a big problem. That's why, like, if you want to keep your dog off-leash, hmm. you need to know they're not going to like obviously react and be aggressive, but also not be too friendly. Because you want hmm. them to be absolutely calm and stable and neutral, and just focus yeah. on you. It's not uh, easy, um, yeah. and it's great if your dog is friendly. But they also need to know to not approach everyone. Hmm. Um, and a lot of the, the like a big mistake we make is we let our dogs do it. Oh, they're friendly. Oh, they're friendly. But that's so what? I don't want to meet your friendly dog. Um, and sometimes it's not gentle. It's me. I'm like I don't want to meet you. I don't want to hmm. chit chat. Wait, like <laughs> I don't want to touch your dog. Like let's walk yeah. on. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's just that. Yeah. So sometimes it's actually managing the people with the dogs, basically, not the dogs yeah, themselves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's another question in the chat which is kind of related. While uh, so Ruchi is asking, while walking, we meet different kinds of people. Some want to meet, and others are okay, and some are scared. And I feel my dog also gets confused on how to behave. Any idea on how to manage that? Um, I would suggest. Um... Uh, I would suggest instead of that, letting your dog decide who to meet and who not to meet, like you tell the dog, like walk on or like sit, sit and you know mm. let them pet you. Or even if the dog jumps and you want that, you can say okay now put on a command like okay now you can jump or now you sit. Teach your dog many ways to breathe. Like you decide, don't let your dog decide. And also decide when you want your dog to keep walking. So put that keep walking action on a command, mm. or give them a clue who's walking, who's walking. You decide. Don't let okay. your dog decide. 
got it and don't let the other person also decide basically don't let the other person decide yeah <laughs> that, that is something uh, that uh, you know you, you you feel free to tell the other person no no i i don't want to meet or my dog you know i'm training my dog to walk better so next time we come in the park you can say you know you can make up some polite excuse yeah yeah that typically doesn't work though like i i i mean i i think it's also very person thing like if yeah. like i have a problem saying no then yeah. i find it very difficult to kind of whatever yeah. then i just like don't make eye contact and just walk on ha theek hai yeah that's I'm another good thing that's another good thing yeah but these are you can just walk that is evil mask mm. niche karke wo bhi amazing <laughs> There's another question that uh, Shreyanjana had. What do you do when your dogs are too smart and uh, when your dog is too smart and does something that he's not supposed to do, just to make you call them back and give treats? Ha! Huh, so this is the pitfall of using food. So a lot of dogs, we make the mistake of distracting them by food a lot. Suddenly it's okay initially, but what I recommend is you call them, um, you call them back, pet them. Reward them with your smile and attention. Make them sit, and then give them a treat. Like make them walk a little bit. For if you want to use treats, got um, it. Hmm. But you can also um, tell them no or stop. Like you can be angry also if your dog is misbehaving. Hmm. Because uh, I mean, see, we have we have clearly in this case we've taught the dog that okay, if you go do that, you come back, you get a treat. Versus like if you go do that, like the consequences of doing that, you know, you haven't told told them. They think yeah. they can do that and they can get a treat. Dogs are very smart. <laughs> But imagine yeah, if like they learn, yeah. they can also learn to come back to you. They learn so Correct. quickly. Dogs learn mm. in ten minutes. Mm. So we have to practice, you know, for five minutes every day. That's all it takes. Yeah. Like really, be on your game. Enjoy being with your dog. Yeah. <laughs> Rena has a question. A uh, four-month-old puppy wants to greet everyone. Should I stop her? Okay, so at four months, I would say um, up to six months is when I would encourage your puppy to be very social. I want them to meet people, be very curious, explore things, get used to sounds, sights, smells, because this is the critical socialization period. Hmm. After this, the window kind of really, really narrows, and your dog is like their opinions on the world are cemented. So I right. want them to leave their socialization period, being like, "Oh, people are fun." Hmm. Uh, what you want to do is let them greet the person, because that is important to their development. We want them to know that people are friendly, and yeah. what happens is this puppy will meet a range of people: kids, old, young, everything. And then you call them back, and then let them be happy to meet you as well. Call them back, hmm. pet them. Belly rub. If you have a treat or a toy, or you know, wave a leaf around, um, anything like be unpredictable and fun. So let them meet, but then call them back as well. So then you Got get it. both. You get socialization and you get your recall practice, like where you're and calling your dog for the fun and things. And after six months, then what should change? Um, uh, up to you and up to the people. After six months, people also change in that they're like, oh, now the dog is bigger. I'm not sure. So then they ask you, "Cut that? Yeah." So then mm. you up to you. You can uh, uh, obviously continue like to expose your dog to different things, like get them used to it. That should continue like at least for the first year, but definitely for those first four to six months. But you work a lot on your training, obedience, take care of everything. But first four to six months, definitely like socialize. And when I say if your dog is scared, meeting people will do more harm than good, right? So like maybe one person at a time, and slowly, slowly. Um, if your dog is like on the more confident side, like anyone. Got it. Okay. So basically, um, completely up to you, but also keep working on training in that situation as well, so that yeah. your dog knows to listen to you ultimately. After six, seven months, you may notice your dog. Like I said, they start, they become a teenager for about six to eight mm. months on, for a year and a half. Yeah. So obviously, you'll, you know, they. The exercise needs will be more. They may start mouthing again. Sometimes toilet training regresses, or they may mark the ball marking the house. Their obedience, mm. you know, sometimes isn't there. So you you will have lots of things to do even after that. <laughs> And, you know, great. Rena, uh, watch out yeah. for your four-month-old puppy becoming a teenager. <laughs> It's really common because you know you think everything is great and then suddenly you're like wait I I put in so much effort and still this is happening but that's okay it's just a phase just keep. Uh, 
keep you hold your ground have your boundaries don't of course don't let your dog misbehave awesome and uh, mercy or leo have a question what if he starts to scavenge and loves it what do you do then <laughs> so uh, first of all if your dog is scavenging you know, just get a health uh, check like a blood test stool test to rule out any worms and all like i said uh, ginger like suddenly had a scavenging and she had like uh, a stool test revealed she had these specific worms that needed like two three special deworming pills for a week and all of that so first rule that out um in this situation either you can practice the recall or kind of make sure the and when you keep him off leash is um, the environment you have a little more aware of the environment but you can also muzzle train him just like your dog loves to the leash or it's indicative of going mm. out you can do yeah. the same with the muzzle it's not cruel or anything muzzle yeah. means oh my god it's super fun like i'm going to go out going out and i can sleep all i want muzzle. without restrictions ha huh? yeah, yeah don't put the muzzle on like over time like get them used to it slowly slowly You can yeah. start with putting like um, keys or something inside, so dog is just used to putting the snout in and licking for like ten minutes and build it up. Got it. So make it like a positive thing before. Yes, uh, yes, and take it and take like a month thing. for the dog to get used to it. Hmm. Okay, so that one month will make sure the next several years is stress free. Otherwise, every day is going to be a struggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that yeah. makes But a lot of sense. To have a yeah. Go on. Yeah. yeah. So uh, okay, cool. So takeaways essentially for uh, teaching a dog to go a dog to go off leash. One is um, know your dog really well. So that has to be key. Um, second yes. is manage the surroundings. So know when you are letting them off leash so that you know exactly what could go wrong in that setting, right? The third thing is um, you have to obviously keep practicing before you even start doing this, right? And train uh, recall commands yeah, specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Basic obedience. Yeah, and also, I mean, involve play while you are kind of doing it, right? So that it becomes like yeah. a unconscious yeah, yeah, yeah. thing for your dog to kind of do. Yeah, what happens with food is sometimes the dog comes back for the food, and you see mm-hmm. things like they come, take the food, and run away. Yeah, uh, which is yeah, if you happens. are yeah, yeah there was even engagement, or sometimes you can even give like three pieces of food, so the dog like learns to stay, but. Uh, If you are engaging with, they come back and they play with you, or like it's just a simple tug, or you throw a toy, or um, like sometimes some dogs like you know like pat on the back or a belly rub, anything. Yeah. Or like you take a few steps back, so then they come to you and then like they have to chase you a little bit. That mm-hmm. you know, five minutes of engagement uh, keeps you like far superior than any other distraction. But Got it takes. You know, you have to be quick. You have to like be a little creative. You have to practice a lot. Uh, hmm. So I I like to use out food and include a lot more of this like engagement as a reward. Got it. So your attention essentially becomes the reward rather than yes, um, yes, just like a physical yes. reward. Yes, I'm glad you said that because uh, I don't give any free attention. Like I'm either hmm. calling my dog. It comes. Uh, it it becomes like a bit of like you're talking to your dog. so and every like your conversation is a lot more focused on okay do this do that or come here or you know like rewarding eye contact as simple as that hmm got yeah. it so that conversation is what they are coming by for that okay i get to have yeah. this fun like talk yeah awesome. and sometimes this is going to be yeah sorry so i was just go saying go for ginger if i like freeze a little like she gets into like stalker mode and like she like come see <laughs> so it just depends on like dog to dog I wouldn't try it with a dog bear with high or prey drive, just yeah. because then like it's not uh, actually very healthy. But with a golden oh. retriever, yeah. like seven hours, yeah. you know it's okay. So it depends. Mm-hmm. What does the dog like to do? How do you move? All these small, small, small things. If you observe your dog, you you will uh, pick it up, and then you can mimic. So your dog does respond. It's never failed oh. me so far. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you've got seven years of experience doing that, so I'm sure <laughs> I will <laughs> take that. <laughs> Does it also change, by the way, when your dog gets older? Like, have you seen? Um, I don't know. Like, how Ginger responds to you? Does that get better? Like, with age? Is it an age thing as well, apart from just like a born thing? I'm sure I, that also grows. I think with age, we have uh, like our confidence, and we like know her. So I think we also allow, give her a lot more leeway. Um, she is a little. Sure. Um, and she is little more um, she's as curious, but I think we do like 
let her you know it's okay if she has certain you know some as simple as if she sits somewhere before we just be like oh come on get up like i want to go but recently yeah. we're like okay let's keep sleeping he'll walk around you small small things that we like let slide because of age uh, but mm. what's happened uh, that's like an aside like maybe more indoors but when it comes to off leash or outside i think she's really smart and she knows nothing bad will happen to her oh. or you know i'm going to leave her like so that confidence level has skyrocketed mm. uh, so um, that is something i'm like amused by also and uh, not amused by also <laughs> so for instance uh, do we have time like yeah, a quick yeah, story yeah. Yeah, okay yeah, so yeah. my dad took her out on a walk and she was just like whatever we were off leash in this one area and i wasn't there but she was narrating the story to me so she just got like after like 15 20 minutes like she's like done i do i want to go home so she like trots towards the gate and looks back and then my dad's like oh, okay okay i'm coming then she trots again and looks back so she's like really <laughs> playful and she step goes runs and goes to the elevator of the building and okay. the first time it happened that i was really worried he's like oh she's running away he was chasing her the classic mistake some kids were also chasing her so it was like for me but it's also like this dog is playing like she knows nothing she's very comfortable in the environment she knows mm-hmm. where she wants to go she knows how to get these people behind her so like with age i think her confidence level has soared and she also knows how to play us because yeah i know but she also knows me you know she knows <laughs> how to get my attention or yeah i give it yeah yeah <laughs> i couldn't say this is behavior she's just smart and she was done like she didn't want to so now my father is a lot better so yeah. he's like you're done theek hai i'll take you home So in that case, I would I would have told Mahadi call her to you, make yeah. her come to you, clip and then walk out. Like don't walk after. Still like retain a bit of control over this dog. <laughs> yeah, But I feel like. But what the relationship is right? You are listening to the dog if you also want the dog to listen to you. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I think she's probably learned that her confidence in that is probably also that whatever happens, you will be there. to kind of yeah. like deal yeah. with it so maybe she doesn't have to deal with it herself also yeah. there's uh, actually one way of teaching a recall is called the panic recall it's when okay. uh, i've not done it with ginger but i think it's yeah. like fantastic you you know your dog you come you know you have your dog you let them off leash or you keep them on a long line that's safer you call your dog once doesn't listen call your dog twice doesn't listen this is a two person thing so make sure there's like a someone in that area who the dog okay. doesn't know very So two times if caught the dog not listen, you just walk away, go home. The dog panics, 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 panics. But she's on a long leash, so this person who's kind of a stranger to the dog holds the leash, just takes the dog back home. The so dog is like learn to focus on you, because otherwise the consequences are like extreme bad. So that also works. Um, again, it, assuming that there is some relationship between you and your dog, yeah, it won't yeah, happen I mean, because yeah, they're gonna have a yeah. boost. I think that goes like I think that is uh, at least in my experience because obviously I don't have that kind of um, experience with off leash but the few times that uh, you know it's happened that Saracha has maybe like sauntered off and I've had to go and find her what I realize is that she's counting on the fact that I will panic and go after her yes. so she yes. knows that I will run yes. and then when I wait I know she will catch up with me and then I'll run again Until yeah. like I lost sight, and then suddenly, like she started looking for me, and it kind of yeah. the um, minute you turned back. Like, hmm. This way, they will come after you. Yeah, yeah. It's it's so, just a matter of teaching them. There are boundaries. Like yeah. when I, a few things you have to learn, and I think the recall command is one of them. Like you don't have yeah. to. You don't learn to sit honestly. It's okay, but like when I say come, you as basic, most basic. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, one yeah. thing that's happened for me also is, uh, I think I've also become maybe because I've seen that she also looks for me. I've started counting on the fact that okay, she will also care if I'm not around. It's not just me yeah, who's going to start definitely. panicking. She will, she will. Yeah. So uh, yeah, a lot of it is also your confidence, and that yeah. if all of this is happening, just unclip Shiracha, Shiracha the next time. So my preference is to you know sometime off leash, sometime on leash, on the same walk. I don't like just let them go, uh, mm. just because I 
because at no point like uh, do i want the dog to only want to be off leash roaming around yeah. i do want yeah. him to also learn to walk be remember you know walk on the leash that's also yeah. very important skill yeah yeah awesome this has been amazing i'm sure people are going to learn a lot from this and hopefully we will see a lot more um well behaved dogs off leash <laughs> that we and get to hear about those who understand the responsibility that comes with off leash dogs yes that has to obviously go with it because yes. otherwise it's only going to be dogs running around and people running around after them yeah <laughs> to catch them <laughs> but thank you so much amrita for doing this this was amazing i have learned thank you for having me <laughs> thank you thank you take care bye bye